Hi everybody and welcome to the lab. Today we are going to go over how to use and operate the Vicel Cell Viability Analyzer. We're going to first talk about some of the different anatomy and parts of the machine and what they do. We're then going to talk about how to prepare and run a sample for trials. Then we're going to talk about some of the things we do when we're done with the machine and how to shut it down properly. And at the end we're going to talk about some troubleshooting errors. So in summary, what this machine does is it uses Tripan Blue, a dye, and various other solutions to dye and count the different cells that it measures in the cups that you put into the machine. It is able to do this by measuring the contrast and size of the cells versus the background of different images that the machine takes. So to start, by looking at the front of the machine, we see four different distinct areas. We see the reagent valve cover, the syringe shield, the aspiration tube cover, and the fault indicator. Here we have the side panel where the reagents, the waste bottle, and the used cell cups are stored. There are additional sensors on each of the tubes where the reagents and the cell waste are stored. So the computer will give you an alert if during your testing procedures, the reagents run low or if the cell waste becomes too high. Before beginning a trial, make sure that the waste bottle is less than half full and make sure that the container holding the used cell cups is less than half full. Here is a view of the back of the machine. Before beginning, make sure that all cords and cables are securely attached to both the machine and the computer. Doing so will ensure that the pictures that the machine sends to the computer are clear and readable for the software. When you begin to use a new cell type, if it is not pre-programmed into the computer, you are able to pre-program some of the aspects of it. Each cell will vary in the degree in which you will measure the brightness, sharpness, spotness, and spot area of the cell. In order to add a new cell, go to File, Cell Types, New. In this area, you will be able to type the type of cell as well as the minimum, maximum diameter, and the number of images you wish to take of each of the cell samples. In addition, you can change the brightness, sharpness, viable spot brightness, and viable spot area that the computer will use to measure whether the cell is viable, non-viable, or whether the cell is um, indicated as a cell or it is not shown up on the image. In order to obtain accurate numbers for these measurements, we recommend that you research the cell and the numbers that should ac accompany the cell as far as measurement, which can be found in the cell manual or through additional research online. Once you are finished programming one of the cells, we recommend that you run at least one to two trial runs to confirm that the machine is measuring the cell accurately. Now we're going to go over some of the physical preparation of your sample. So when removing the samples from the cell culture, you will place them in one of the four milliliter sample cups. When you're doing this, make sure to keep track of the volumes of your cells and media solution because you will need these to input the dilution factor when you log your cell samples. What we have found is that somewhere between one and 0.5 milliliters of solution is usually adequate um, to avoid bubbles that can, air bubbles that can form and throw off the counts. If you believe the machine has been contaminated in some way, before you run your sample, you will need to disinfect it. And you can do this by following the steps of instrument and then decontaminate. If this is the first time that you are using the machine in an extended period of time or for a few days, you're going to want to prime the machine. This will make sure that the machine is ready for the cell sample and to eliminate um, any possible contamination or other circumstances that could arise that could throw off your numbers. In the bottom of the screen, you will see the reagent count, and it will show you approximately how many runs you have left with the reagents. When it gets low, you will be prompted by the machine to replace the reagent pack. When doing so, you will click on Instrument, Replace Reagent Pack, and follow the on-screen instructions. These instructions will walk you through how to replace and remove the old reagent pack, 
and put the new one in the correct spot in the machine. When you are logging a sample, you're going to want to give the sample a name that will correspond to the concentration of the media or solution that your cell is in, the cell, and then the number that corresponds to the plate that you used. You're going to want to make sure that each cell name is unique, otherwise the program will rewrite over previously stored data that may interfere with your results. Make sure that the number on the rotator wheel on the spinner corresponds with the position number that you have logged in the sample. Additionally, do not manually move the spinner to add more cell samples, as this can cause problems with the machine. In addition, when you are seeing the images that are taken of the samples, if you see cells that are being counted that shouldn't, you can manually go back and change the parameters. In the event, in the instrument status and control panel, the status of the machine is idle, not connected, or not responding, close the Vicel program, keep the Vicel machine turned on, and relaunch the program. Some problems that have arisen that are frequent is if the camera is not connected, when you click on camera image, it will either be an all white, all black, or a gray screen, and you may or may not be met with an error message indicating that it cannot connect. If you have any additional questions or problems that come up, please see the reference manual and the online instruction from the company for more information.